I don't drink, but boy, if I got some sort of holiday hangover from getting no sleep and eating way too many sweets. So bear with me as today we go through a nice, simple convergent sequence exercise. We'll be proving that if every term of a sequence is equal to the same real number, say C, then that sequence converges to that constant value C. This is a great way to practice when you first learn the definition of a convergent sequence to prove a simple, obvious result like this using that definition. If you need a recap of the definition of a convergent sequence and what it means for a sequence to converge to some limit, I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson on the topic so you can check that out. Now, give this proof a shot yourself because it's pretty straightforward before watching the lesson. Try to prove that a constant sequence where every term is equal to some real number c must converge to that constant value C. All right, hopefully you've given it a try and have a nice little sketch of the proof you worked out yourself. I think this is a really intuitive and obvious result because remember what it means for a sequence to converge to a limit is that the sequence gets arbitrarily close to the limit. So you could give me any positive number represented by an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero and eventually our sequence will get and stay within epsilon of its limit. However, in this case, we think the limit is C, our sequence is always as close as possible to C, because our sequence is just always C. It's a constant sequence. So seems pretty obvious. Let's go ahead and see how nice and beautiful the proof is. We all know how a convergent sequence proof begins. We have the classic, let epsilon be greater than zero. This is just fixing some arbitrary positive real number where the rest of, of the proof is going to show that we can guarantee our sequence will eventually be within epsilon of its supposed limit, which we think is C. If we write this proof to line up exactly with your typical textbook definition of a convergent sequence, the next part of the proof would typically be to say, and set big N equal to something. That something is usually an expression we solved for while doing some scratch work that we usually do before writing a convergent sequence proof in that scratch work, what we do is figure out how far along in the sequence do we need to go to guarantee the inequality we want, to guarantee that our sequence will be within epsilon of its limit. For this proof, as you'll see, as you would see if you did the scratch work on your own, and as you'll see as we finish up the proof, any value of big N will work. So we could say, and let big N equal one. Then for all little n, this is basically saying for all terms of our sequence. So we say for all, for all little n greater than or equal to big N, we want to show that the terms of our sequence, a n, are within epsilon of the limit c. So let's see how that works out. To represent the distance between the terms of our sequence and the claimed limit of c, we write the absolute value of a n minus c. Remember the end goal is to show that this is less than epsilon, which thankfully here is a piece of cake. All we have to do is substitute in what a term of our sequence looks like. By definition, every term of our sequence is equal to c. So the distance between a term of our sequence and c, that's the absolute value of a n minus c, is the absolute value of c minus c, which is the absolute value of zero, which is zero, which of course is less than epsilon because epsilon was taken to be greater than zero. And that's it. That's our proof that a constant sequence must converge to its constant value. Now let me just spend a minute talking a little bit about these definitional conventions with a big N and saying for all little n greater than or equal to big N. The basic idea behind the big N is that it's some positive integer, big N, so that from the big nth term of our sequence onwards, the following string of equalities and inequalities 
holds, which is why we say for all little n greater than or equal to big N. From this point in the sequence onwards, for all n greater than or equal to big N, what we want to be true is true. Of course, the smallest positive integer is 1. So by setting big N equal to 1, the smallest positive integer, we're really saying this stuff holds for every term in our sequence, a1, a2, a3, and so on, which of course makes sense since every term of our sequence is the same. Every term is equal to that constant value of c. Also, in your typical convergence sequence proof, the value for big N that's going to work is actually going to be a function of epsilon because usually the smaller epsilon is, the bigger big N is going to have to be in order for the rest of the proof to work. In this case, setting big N equal to one will always work no matter how small epsilon is because our sequence is constant. And that's it. So I hope this video helped you understand how to prove that a constant sequence converges to its constant value. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the jolliest math lessons on the internet.